Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Today I have something a little different. I'm going to take my most popular repair blogs, The Repair of the Black & Decker Belgian Waffle Makers Parts 1 and 2, and make them into a video. Okay, I know this is a bit of a cheat, but I'm working on a really big project and I need more time. Right now I need your help. Hopefully this video will get me the few subscribers I need to get a personalized channel name. So if you haven't already, get down there and hit the subscribe button and help me out. Okay, it's called the model WMB500 and I got mine for Christmas. It worked perfectly fine the first time I used it, but when I went to use it a second time, one of the hinge pins were broken. So we took it back and got another one, but those pins broke within a few weeks. And then I called Black & Decker Hotline and they sent me some more pins and guess what? They broke too. I put away the waffle iron thinking that someday an idea for the perfect mix would come to me. It's really too bad, as the little machine made perfect waffles. It wasn't too hard to clean for a waffle maker. Less parts means less parts to clean, you know. Its small size is perfect for storage and it fit neatly on its edge in the cupboard next to the waffle mix. Eventually I took the broken waffle maker to the local Ace Hardware and walked up and down the aisles with little screws and nuts until an idea came to mind. If I could find some fuel hose that fit in the hinge opening, then a small nut and bolt could be used to expand the hose and form a new hinge. You want to use at least fuel hose because it's made to withstand a bit higher temperature than normal hose, and since a waffle iron gets really hot, you gotta think about these things. I buy a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch countersunk bolts with hex nuts, two quarter inch washers, and one foot of quarter inch fuel hose. If you want to try this, you have to make sure the fuel hose fits in the hinge pin opening, as fuel hose is sold by the inside diameter, not the outside, which means that the number can vary. The hose was cut to just over one inch, and one end was countersunk by hand, turning a half inch drill bit to remove a tiny bit of material. Here the bolt and hose have been inserted into the hinge opening, Make sure the hose passes through both parts of the plastic body so there is room for it to expand. Finished repair. I used the least expensive hardware which made the total cost less than $3, but you can use an acorn nut that would hide the threads and make a slightly nicer looking pair for another dollar or two. I wish I had a picture here showing my smiling face grilling waffles, but I'm sure you get the idea. But wait, there's more. What would be the most popular blog without a sequel? Part two of the repair is for those lucky enough to have a 3D printer. This was one of my first experiences with the new printer at the time I was working with Tinkercad, which is fine for a single part like this, but since I've moved on to Fusion 360. First thing I wanna start with is if you already did the first fix and it's holding up for you, then stop right here and go back to making waffles as this one does exactly the same thing. When I designed these new parts, I had taken apart my waffle maker and inspected the old pieces. I found them to have held up perfectly, showing no signs of wear or stress at all, and did not require replacement. It's a good idea to pull the pins and give the hinge a good cleaning once in a while, as grease does build up in the recessed areas, but other than that, there's no reason to replace them if they're working. Okay. So I guess you haven't done the previous repair and want to see what I've come up with. With the pins out and the area cleaned of grease and pancake batter, we can make some measurements to aid the design of the new part. If you still have an old pin, it's easy to measure the depth, the width, and the locking tabs. If you don't, you need a caliper to measure the hinge dimensions of the parts. I couldn't find any old pins and I had to do the latter. I'd like to start with a sketch so when I sit down on the computer, I can just get to work. The sketch is done first, then the dimensions are filled in as I measure the part. This is the part that was modeled in Tinkercad, a free online 3D design tool. It's great for simple parts like this. Here's the part being printed, and here's the finished product. If you're interested, I've made the models available at Thingiverse but you have to make sure you print them using high temp filament because waffle irons get hot. 
If your printer can only print PLA, then I recommend using my original method. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.